Hey guys, welcome to the Dragon's Voice podcast. I am your host, Truly Reese Deans, and uh, it's it's been a terrific journey so far on the Dragon's Voice podcast. I hope you guys have really been enjoying it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give a follow on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, with my new guest today, he is he's been around the block. He has he's been in played in the English league, he's played in the Welsh league, he's played in the Scottish league. He's won loads. He's accomplished everything. He's played international football for Wales. He's played for Rangers. He's played for my Barry Town on one occasion. Um, he's a, a Cardiff City legend who's also a goalkeeping coach there. And it's none other than and Andy Dibble. Andy, how's it going, pal? Yeah, fantastic, mate. I'm just up in the uh, the team hotel. We're we're preparing for our game tomorrow at Stoke. But you you did make me laugh there. It makes me sound kind of journeyman, which I suppose I am. Yeah, well, do you know what? A lot of people would say you're a journeyman because of the amount of clubs you've been to. It was roughly around about 18 clubs that you uh, you played for. Was you really proud that you've you just you've played for so long? Yeah, I'm, pr- I'm proud that I had a, a, a career that lasted quite a long time. I think what happened with with a lot of those clubs, or you'll see that a lot of them were loan periods um, during my day, uh, especially. My latter, sorry, me after my second or third season at Manchester City, where I was a regular, um, and then Tony Copeland came in. Rather than uh, th- there was no sub goalkeepers in them days, so rather than hang around, it was always important for me to get out and play. So uh, hence, I've had a few loan clubs in that number. And do, do you know when you uh, you started your career at Cardiff City? Um, and you made your first appearance on your 17th birthday, which was against Crystal Palace, which was a win. Um, how did how did that uh, career path start for you at Cardiff City then? What what was the process and how did it get to you playing for your team? Well, as you know, everybody knows I love Cardiff City. I'm Cardiff City through and through. Um, I st- funnily enough, um, I started out um, at the club when I was a 12-year-old. But the club actually found me um, not lo- long after... I started as a, a left fullback, um, and I was rubbish. And then the club found me. I converted to become a goalkeeper. And I think when they spotted me on uh, on that day, I think we'd lost eight nine nil. And I remember coming off the field, and I was in tears. Uh, my father was an ex goalkeeper as well. You know, tried to pick me up, but uh, the next game, somebody else come, a different scout from the club came and watched me again. And I think I let another glut load of goals in. I think it was six. So I must have conceded about 15 goals in two games, if my mathematics are correct. And lo and behold, um, a scout approached my father and said, you know, we'd love to, we'd love your son to come in training with us. Uh, from there, developed. I, I went to come round train, training with them twice a week on the um, old artificial pitch up there. Um, and by the time I was 13, 14, I'd signed schoolboy forms for the club. And I think I made my debut in the football combination when I was 14, 15. Um, uh, I'll never forget it because Phil Dwyer played in front of me that day. We had quite an experienced team at Norwich. So I was privileged to, um, to I suppose, get into senior football at a very, very young age. And then obviously things progressed and progressed. I became an apprentice. Um, and then I made my debut when I was 17. So it was a, a pretty early journey into the life of a professional football. You spent a couple of years at a uh, couple of seasons at Cardiff City, and of course, you know you had uh, some tremendous characters. You had uh, Phil Dwyer. There was Paul Bowden at one point, you know, and there was a lot of uh, particular characters. Well, was there any particular moment uh, that stood out for you during your playing career at Cardiff City football? I think my debut was was massive for me. Um, obviously, um, the next two ca- the next two games were really massive for me as well. The Welsh Cup games against Swansea where there was obviously both um, a big, 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 big crowd, you know? Yeah. But then the following season, um, to get promoted in my first season was fantastic. And uh, I'll never forget the the birthday celebrations on my 18th birthday. You know, with that season, we got promoted and being with the likes of, uh, obviously, Phil Dwyer, Jeff Hemmerman, John Lewis, Lyndon Jones, Keith Bontlin. You know, the list goes on and on. Tarky, forget me if I've... Uh, Forgive me, sorry if I'm not named everybody, but, you know, Jimmy Mullen, great set of lads um, and, a, and a really good football team. The Bennett brothers, you know, we had a top draw team. And uh, when you went to Luton, there was a lot of football cl- a lot of football teams that were after you for your signature, but eventually it, it went to Luton Town. And uh, you've had some success at Luton, especially, you know, uh, playing... 
uh, a big cup final, the, the League Cup final uh, at Wembley. It was uh, Luton Town v Arsenal. And, you know, it was a big one. It was a 3-2 win for Luton, but uh, you were man of the match uh, that day. Uh, could you tell us the story and uh, how you experienced that cup final, especially against the, the mighty Arsenal, as they were called? Yeah, it was a fantastic day out for me. I, I, I'm obviously been battling things out with Les Healy, who sadly is no longer with us. Um, a great guy, great guy to learn from, especially, you know, I'm still at a very, very young age there in goalkeeping terms. Um, uh, three weeks previous, I'd played in the FA Cup semi-final where um, we got beat by Wimbledon. Um, and I remember having a, you know, I'm not an egotistic person, but I had a very, very good game, but it was soured in the last few minutes where I'd brought over um, Dennis Wise and John Fashion, who more, almost, well, scuffed the penalty into the net to, to take Wimbledon into the FA Cup final. Um, coming off the field, I'd never felt so low in all my career. And then three weeks later, uh, we turned up at Wembley, um, and probably the um, pinnacle of my career, really, to to win a major honour then in in a in a cup that was that is obviously not fa very fashionable now. But on that day, there was a hundred thousand people, um, and to make a penalty save at the tunnel end uh, and and win the game, and probably one of the the most exciting cup finals ever seen at Wembley uh, it was a fantastic feeling. Was you disappointed that uh, because the League Cup uh, provided uh, European qualifications, considering that time that uh, because the ban was still there for any English club to, to compete in the uh, in Europe because of the high stadium disaster, was you a bit disappointed that you didn't get the chance to play in Europe for Luton Town? Yeah, I think everybody was disappointed that time. I mean, be uh, a great feeling for somebody to go and play in Europe, and then. I, funnily enough, I went on loan to Aberdeen uh, at one stage of my career. And I thought I was going to have a chance to play in Europe there, but that was blocked as well. So, sadly, I didn't get a chance to play any European football. Uh, it was taken out of my hands, but, you know, that's life. <laughs> but instead of that, you, you did play, you know, international football. I um, mean, you got the colour to, for Wales. I think it was around about the time where it was Mike England, if I say Mike England or Terry Yorath. Yeah, yeah, it was... It, I mean, I'm privileged to have three Welsh caps in my name. Um, and hand on that, I must have had, I don't know how many behind Neville Southall. <laughs> I think double fi over double figures where I was behind Nev. But I never looked at it upon as a, a you know, a, a slight to my ability or anything because I, I, I was still learning. And obviously, I was behind, in my eyes, one of the best goalkeepers in, in Europe, if not the world at that time. A phenomenal goalkeeper. And, just missed a consistent week in, week out, and you know, I could never get past him, really. How did you feel when you got that call-up, though, to come and play for Wales? It, it, and another thing, another pinnacle in my career, it was fantastic. And, you know, I was lucky enough to play um, at school by level and under 21 level. Plus, <laughs> I, again, I, I like to think I've been fortunate as well that I became a, um, an under-16 rugby international as well. So, you know... <laughs> A double achievement, I suppose, with both codes, but great feelings. When you went to Man City, and uh, for ladies and gentlemen, if you're, you're probably watching this, and the reason why we're going so quick is because there is a big bit of a time schedule here, so I'll just let my yeah. <laughs> the audience know. It's like, oh, slow down. But uh, um, it, it's because Andy Dewell, you know, goalkeeping coach for Cardiff City, and I'll mention that towards the nearly the end of the, uh, uh, of the podcast. But uh, as we're trying to keep it as quick as possible. But um, when you signed for Man City, uh, when when you got the call up to, see, to say, "Oh, do you want to come for, sign for Man City?" Was it you know a big opportunity for you because you played uh, over a hundred hundred appearances, league appearances for for Man City? So uh, how how did the uh, the trans transfer happen for you to go to Man City? Yeah, I mean it was a it was a, it was a wrench for me to leave Luton, and you know I picked up a couple of I picked up a couple of. Um, bad injuries along the way at Luton and I would love to have got more appearances under my belt but that time we're playing on an artificial surface and you know it cost me a few games and you know at the end I got in the team we won the cup and I was playing really solid football uh, there was something about Man City um, the size of the club and no disrespect to Luton which was a smashing club with great support uh, Manchester City is a big name in Europe and al although it was in the uh, a league one lower than Luton at the time. Um, 
as I said, the size of the club um, and the attraction of, of going up there. And I spoke to Mel Machen, who was the manager at the time, really ambitious to get back into the top flight, which we did in my first season. Um, it's strange because people used to say, oh, you're going up to Coronation Street land. But um, funnily enough, uh, Manchester then became a home for probably 30 years. And uh, one of the games I really have to mention, and I think, I don't know, I think you know where I'm going to go with this one. It is a very well-known story. I actually watched it on YouTube when I act, uh, and I saw this. I thought, oh, Flimineca, I, re- I remember that. I mean, I mean I'm only 24, but my, my dad always talked about it. It was that, uh, can you tell us a story about the game against Nottingham Boys and where Gary Crosby scored that goal when he knocked the ball out of your hand, you know? Well, I firmly think that... Um... Uh, Howard Kendall was the manager at the time. God bless him. He's no longer with us. Um, fantastic manager. You know, I'd been playing really solidly and uh, was a permanent in the team. I think that goal that day probably cost me a place at Manchester City, although I, uh, although I um, continued to play numerous games after. But Tony Cope was born at the end of that season. Basically, I've come to catch a deep cross at the far post. Um, Took it outside the line, the right post, fell to the floor, got had the ball in my hand, which I'll demonstrate now, trying to throw it out quickly. Um, Gary Crosby came from behind me. I couldn't see him. He knocked the ball out of my hand. I chased after him with an ashen face and he was knocked in the back of the net. And, you know, to, to everybody's disbelief, the goal was given. I mean, obviously, nowadays it would never happen. Um, you'd have been sent off. I constantly bumped into Roger Gifford who's who's a Welsh referee who was refereeing the game that day and he's now I think he uh, overlooks the referees nowadays and I always say to him Roger that goal should never have been allowed so he always laughs back at me because I think there was you know in those days you, the game's changed totally hasn't it you know with tackling and all sorts of so the, the goal stood but it um it's, it's never forgotten. And as much as you've had your good times in football, like the penalty save at Wembley, promotion at Cardiff, promotion as a coach at Cardiff in the Premier League, you go away to Spain, and it's, it, 30 years later, it's still been shown on TV as one of the bloopers. So it, it's one of them that haunts you. Um, but all you can do uh, now is just look at it and laugh and smile. Do you know what? Even though you made over 100 hundred odd appearances for Man City and because of a lot of injuries and everything, so you, you were bouncing to many football clubs, you know, and uh, there's so many to go through. But I really want to know this one. It was a, even though it was a three-month sign-in, you know, because of the injuries that uh, uh, in, for Rangers, uh, Andy Gorham, um, Gorham was injured for Rangers, but that must have been a big move because you were, you were thrown straight into the lion's den where it was the old firm derby. Well, um, it, it, I, it, it's great that you're asking me this question because I kind of dreamt it and, and me three I achieved what I wanted to achieve me three um, boyhood favourite clubs well, Cardiff City is number one Manchester City is number two because I love goalkeeping and I love Joe, Joe Corrigan and the third club was Glasgow Rangers and I ended up playing for the three of them and, and that, that is, is, is a true story so it's weird how it all came to fruition and Going to Rangers was one of the uh, unbelievable experience, you know, the biggest one of the biggest clubs in Europe. Can you explain to us the experience that you uh, that you endured when uh, you were at uh, the the old firm derby, you know, the Rangers v Celtics? I, I watched that game doing the research and everything. I thought that was, yeah. I mean, every old firm derby is a tense derby. Even to this day, it's going to be an intense derby. But then I thought, flipping heck, what must have gone through your head when you were play, when you were a number one goalkeeper in that goals? What was going through your head at that time? Well, I realised how big it was when I got off the team coach and I had people, people men spitting all, all over me. And the same experience when I left, but obviously when we left the game, it was a lot happier. But the, the, the biggest thing that um, I noticed was when I got, well, sorry, when I ran out to the pitch, the noise was just deafening. And I, you have to be up there and um, embrace yourself with Glasgow, and then you you find out how bad the the passion, the hatred is. You know, I don't like using that word, but it was such a massive game, and it was probably at the end of the ninety minutes that I realised how big that game was, and what I'd done, and what I'd achieved. 
and to, to keep a clean sheet in that intimidating atmosphere um, was another a fantastic achievement for me. Um, but everything from when I arrived at the club till when I left the club, um, I, I couldn't say to uh, thank people enough. They're a brilliant set of lads, fantastic manager, everything about the place. Did you get a medal in the end? Because you said you, you, you were part of the squad. Did you get... No, I missed out by one game, I think it was. Oh, never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, oh. you know... But the, uh, the, I remember the last game, the, the, um, the journey back from Hearts. We'd won the nine in a row on the wet Tuesday night against Dundee United, uh, which was fantastic. The celebrations were brilliant after that. But after the last game at Hearts, um, it, it was an uh, unbelievable situation where we finished the game and helicopters came and picked us up off the centre of the pitch at Hearts um, and f flew us the short journey back to uh, back into Glasgow where we, we landed at Ibrox and the stadium was full of, of fans. Um, where the celebrations were, you know, were rocking, and you can imagine people like Gaza and Ali McCoyst and how much it meant to them people, you know, to to have nine in a row. So I always keep a close eye on it now, and I see that Celtic are going for ten, but that might not be achieved. <laughs> Do you know? Um, I wanted to mention Ali McCoyst and Paul uh, Paul Gascoigne because those were the two big names. You know, Ali McCoyst was Mr. Rangers at the end of the day, and Paul Gascoigne. You know, well, we we all know how much of a character he is. But how important? This probably is a daft question, but to you, what what would how, how influential were those two players playing for Rangers at that time or during their? Time? Yeah, I mean that they were they were. Uh big, big players that um, had played on the international stage. They were so influential for the team, uh, made the team tick. But, you know, if you looked about that team, they, there was another 10 of them, another 12 in the squad. But um, one thing I would say about McCoy, he sat on me in straight away. He was, he was fantastic. As soon as I turned up in the dressing room, he was the one that introduced me to everyone and made me feel so at home. And, you know, when people talk about Gaza and the problems he had, he's had, uh, as a person, I've never met such a, a, a fantastic guy that would sign every single autograph for everybody. Um, he's on the on the pitch stuff, talks for itself anyway. He's fantastic. Um, I really wanted to mention this question because when I spoke to people in Barry about about you coming on the show, he says, you better mention him or Barry, you know, all my mates were there. And, uh, but I think uh, when you did signed for Barry, it was only the one game and uh, I, I don't know if you want to go into it but I, I really want to know, it was just um, it was against Carmarthen and I Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd actually I, when I signed for Barry, I played in the Welsh Cup games Oh, was it? Um, yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah, I played in the Welsh, which the FAW I think I played against Swansea, New, was it Swansea Newport? And they were filmed by TV and then Gary Barnett had said to me would you play in a league? Because what happened, I signed for Barry because I was trying to get to um, Boston and I would more or less agreed a deal to go and play in America. And I, to sign for Barry was a fantastic um, gap, a stop gap for me to get to play some football um, and then get myself over to America. Uh, I agreed to play in the game at Camarda and then everybody knows it was, uh, it was a horrific time. And I love my, my tight little spell at Barry. It was fantastic, great. Great club, a lot of lot of affection. Um, it was a really, really cold, wet, windy day. I'll never forget it. I, I slid out for a ball on the six-yard line early on in the game. Made a couple of sliding saves around the penalty spot. Um, 20 minutes into the game, I'm thinking I was in excruciating pain underneath my right-hand side here. Yeah. Uh, it was horrendous and I'm just thinking well I don't, I don't know what I've done here because I, I haven't been kicked I'm not injured um, then I couldn't wait to get off the field at half time um, I took my shirt off and I was just I was wondering how I was going to get out for the second half but I mean I pulled myself together the physio looked at me and he just, just said your body's looks like you've been on a sunbed he said I, I, I just can't work out what's happened here he said, you look, it looks as if you got some kind of sunburn. Um, anyway, I managed to get through the 90 minutes. He was 
I just it was just getting worse. It was so painful. So I came off, and he looked at me, and the, I think the doctor looked at me, and they, they just couldn't work out what happened. But they obviously re, they were realising that I'd been burnt by something. So next step was off to the uh, the hospital in in Carmarthen, where um, a specialist looked at me and said, uh, you know, that this you've got f skin burns, first degree burns, but we can't treat you. You're gonna have to go to Morrison. So they sent me to Morrison uh, to the burns unit in Morrison, and um, I was put out on a on a table and. The surgeon came round and prodded some things in me, which I couldn't feel. Uh, and then he says to me, "It looks like you're going to be staying here for a, for quite a while. You've you've got serious burns to your to your skin." So that night I was operated on uh, three grafts: one on my hip, one underneath my arm, and one and one on, on the side of my chest. Yeah. So it was it was a very very um, how can I say traumatic time and. I ended up spending a week in the Burns unit there, and then I was transferred to Manchester. Um, being in the Burns unit is not a very nice ward to be on, you know. No. I saw some horrific, saw some horrific things, and it put really put life into perspective for me. Uh, obviously, <laughs> then there was an investigation done, and uh, it was there was caustic soda um, found on the white in the whites, you know, the markings for the lines. Yeah. The so that was what burnt me. Um, I didn't know at the time whether I'd get back to playing league football again, or I mean, my dream to go to America was ruined. That was for sure. But um, six months down the line, I managed to get myself back together and get back into league football via Hartlepool United. They were, I was grateful for them to give me the choice. And then on to Stockport. So, and then finally up to Wrexham. But, uh, God was smiling on me. I got, I got myself back playing. A lot of people didn't think I'd play football again. Do you know when you went to Wrexham, uh, was it, did, did you ever feel that you were going to finish your career at Wrexham? Because I know you went to Accrington Stanley, which then led you on to goalkeeping coaching at there. But did you ever feel that Wrexham was going to be the club that was going to be, yeah, done and dusted, all good? Yeah, I kind of did. Um, and Dennis Smith wanted me to be part of the coaching staff there. Um, I was 39, I think, then. And we'd, we got promoted... I've been lucky. I was promoted there as well with Wrexham, which was a great feeling. Um, in fact, I think that might have been around my 40th birthday, telling lie there to you. So, uh, and sadly, as I said, the club went into admin, blah, 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 and they couldn't afford to keep me anymore. So I did think that was going to happen, but then I appeared at Akron Stanley and who were, another, they? <laughs> who were they? But, you know, that that was a, Again, another fantastic time, and it was it was it was a different type of feeling at Accrington because, you know, we had went from having lots and lots of things to probably nothing. You know, we were short of training balls, training on muddy pitches, and uh, but a, gr a great great learning curve, and obviously foot on the ladder in the coaching side of things. Um, where that season we won the conference by a country mile, so it was great to be part of it. Uh, Team spirit, the best fun bus I've ever been on. <laughs> well, do you know when, oh, so everyone my wife thought my wife thought I'd joined the rugby team because every Saturday I went <laughs> after the game. I never got home till two or three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I got that's the same with a lot of Barry Town fans. My missus goes, it's like uh, now with, with the announcements of Wales, you know, playing in uh, uh, yeah. Estonia and uh, Belgium and etc. in the group stages. My missus just looked at me and went, it's going to be a few other away trips that you're going to go to, isn't it? And I just went, yep, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, yeah. With goalkeeping country, you went to various clubs like Rotherham, Ackerton, Stanley, but uh, uh, was it inevitable that uh, Cardiff City were going to come knocking on your door? And how did it happen? It, it, it was a dream. It was a dream come true for me. Um, everybody thinks I'd spent a lot of time with Neil Warnock, and I didn't. I had, he came into Rotherham, and, and I, had, I spent I had three months with him. But it was it was a, a, a terrific three months. I mean, we were down the bottom of the um, championship, looked as if we were dead and buried. Um, and Neil Warnock came in, and we managed to stay up and finish probably higher than we thought. And it, it was it was a it was a brilliant achievement because I said 
it looked like relegation was a, a certainty. Um, got on really well with Neil. Um, fantastic guy, top coach. And then out of the blue, a call came and just said that uh, Martin Markson was leaving the club. And would I be interested in, in being his goalkeeping coach? And, you know, it, I'd had seven years at Rotherham then, you know, so it was a gut wrench leaving Rotherham. But to come home to my hometown club where I started as a kid is, you know, it was one of them. It was, you know, I'm coming, I'm coming straight away. Final question for you now, because I know time's running a bit short now, but uh, I always end this, uh, end the podcast with, it's like a cliche question, but for you is, um, how do you look back on your career? With happiness, um, proud, proud of what I've achieved. Um, I know I've got a lot of games under my belt, but in there was some, some really bad injuries and I just wish I could have probably got, got another 150 games maybe in my belt, but I picked up some bad um, injury, I said, but I'm proud of what I've achieved and I'd like to think I'm, you know, on the, on the achievement side. I'd like to see, look, think my CV looks, looks good, you know, there's promotions and then for me, football's all about winning trophies or getting promotions and I'm lucky enough I've done that. Really lucky enough indeed. Well, do you know what? It's been, I, I've been very fortunate to sit with you, Andy, and talk about, you know, your days playing your career. I wish you could have been a lot longer and hopefully in the future we can actually sit down properly and talk about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back on again for sure. Oh, absolutely. Happy days. I'll, um, but like I said, because I know uh, this has been recorded, it's all pre-recorded, so it's literally going to be week in a couple of weeks' time that will be released, but I'll let you know. But I would just like to say now, all the very best against Stoke tomorrow. Uh, wish the, the lads all the very best, you know, wish the match all the very best. And uh, I would just like to say a big thank you for coming on the Dragon's Voice podcast. It's my pleasure, Reese, and uh, up the Bluebirds, and also say a big hello to all the Barrytown fans for me. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. Thank you very much, Andy. And you, had, you had one of my young goalkeepers there, George Ratcliffe, I did I believe he did very well for you. Tell him he was cracking. He was brilliant. I had him on my uh, radio show, uh, the Ellen Barmy radio show, and uh, he was absolutely delightful to be part of the club. And do you know what? He's going to be future Wales number one, without a doubt. Hopefully, I, I say, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Pleasure Take to be on board. Andy. Take it easy. Thank Take you. care. Good night. Nice win. Bye-bye. So, guys, that was it. That was Andy Dibble on the Dragon's Voice podcast. And uh, like I said, he will come back on. He said no problem at all. And I do apologize that it was uh, cut short. But because uh, he's a Cardiff City goalkeeper coach, um, it, it's, it's one of those things. But I'm glad I got something for you guys, truly. And I hope you've enjoyed it so far. And also, I just want to say as well, I hope you've really been enjoying the previous episodes with Jeremy Roberts and Luke Williams and uh, Gareth Owen, you know, all the other podcasts as well. But please make sure you tune in, you know, every Friday we do this. So it's going to be no problem at all for me uh, to get you the best content. But again, I will try my best to get Andy to come on again to talk a bit more uh, in depth and to talk more about, you know, his career and how he's um, reached for the stars, you know, playing for Wales, winning the League Cup with Luton, playing for Man City, playing for Rangers. No problem at all. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Dragon's Voice podcast. I've been your host, Truly Reece Deans. And again, thank you so much, Andy, for coming on. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.